I embrace New York. I love the hustle and bustle and the cacophony of noises. And the people are such a mix. I loved it. I fit right in. 1975, my third US Open. The big thing was that I knew that I was not going to be coming back to Czechoslovakia, that I was going to defect when the tournament was over. I lost to Chris in the semis on Thursday, so Friday uh, we went over to the Immigration Naturalization uh, Bureau asking for political asylum. Martina has been granted political asylum by the United States. Why did I decide to do this? I just felt that if I want to become number one, which I want to, that I couldn't do it under the circumstances at home. The biggest reason I needed to defect was because the Federation uh, was dictating where I could and could not play. You could not get a visa until you got a stamp from the government. Essentially, if they don't give me that stamp, I can't leave. I can't play. You know, I want to play as much as I can and uh, when, I, when I want and where I want. So my first US Open as a citizen is uh, in 81. And also what happened that some, I was outed by a newspaper man, said, yes, I am gay, but I can't really talk about it because it would hurt the tour. He printed the article anyway. End up losing to Tracy Austin in the finals. Seven, six in the third. What a terrible disappointment for Martina Navratilova. When they give me the runner-up trophy, the, the crowd kept clapping and they kept clapping and I finally just started crying because I felt that despite the fact that I came out as a gay woman, I was accepted in America. So 83, I'm heading into the Open. It's the only slam I haven't won. Martina Navratilova, Chris Everett Lloyd. The women's finals of 1983 at the US Open. I've only lost one match the whole year. I'm going to the Open, huge favorite, so a lot of pressure. Sure, one in 82 didn't, but I came through and beat Chris out in the finals. <laughs> Beating Chris 6-1-6-3 under these circumstances, playing as well as I did, was one of the biggest and best matches of my career. I really don't know what to say. I've planned this speech many times, <laughs> but I've never gotten to do it, so finally. <laughs> As welcome as I felt in 81 and as happy as I was in 83, 84, they turned on me and it was really rough. Martina's going to get herself in trouble with this crowd if she keeps mimicking them and begging them for applause. And I won the match and I was crying after the match because I was so upset that I had to work so hard. It's the crowd. Martina Navratilova. Open. It was kind of the push-pull relationship that I've had with this city and that I've had in this tournament. Martina Navratilova began her professional tennis career in 1975. All those in attendance at Arthur Ashe Stadium Perhaps witnessing the last point in the career of that woman, Martina Navratilova. She will walk away from the game, a Grand Slam champion for the 59th time. Started my career winning mixed doubles at, at the French Open, and then I put a finishing touch on on my career with another mixed doubles title. Fittingly, it finished here at the US Open. I've seen these things on TV, you know, people propose on the Jumpatron, and, uh, and I thought, why not? <laughs> We've been together for over six years. So, Julia Lemigala, would you please do me the honor one day soon? <laughs> please marry me. <laughs> please marry me. <laughs> this place is special. Arthur Ashe Stadium. I mean, it's as good as it gets, and uh, it just seemed fitting. The city gave me freedom, the country gave me freedom. I got it in 75, um, kind of put a stamp on it in 81 when I became a citizen and uh, finished my career here, doing it my way. So what this tournament really represents to me and the city is freedom. When Martina starts rolling, 
Look out. I can't see anything that will stop her. Strong and graceful. Uh, Martina is champion. You might be watching the best ever. Ladies and gentlemen, Martina Navratilova. She engaged in battles on the court and literally got engaged off the court. Martina Navratilova and the U.S. Open, a marriage made in tennis heaven. Tracy, I'll start with you because there's a couple angles here. But on the tennis side, I mean, how great was Martina in New York? Unbelievable. And she just wanted to be accepted in New York because the crowd is so loud. They get so rambunctious. And after that 81 final, I think she really felt accepted. She, somebody had outed her, as she said, which was so painful for her. Uh, but the fact that, that she lost and she had become a citizen, she wanted to win the U.S. Open so badly because that was her newly adopted country. Uh, when they when they cheered for her, I think that really turned the world around for Martina. And then to finish it off by, uh, of, of course, getting engaged to Julia at the end, finishing her last match there. I think she was in her late 40s. I, that's just ridiculous to be winning a major in your late 40s. And for uh, 30 years, she was successful on the tour. Um, so many ups and downs. And to defect, I think that might be the most important uh, part of the U.S. Open. To do it after that, think about how difficult that was for her to maybe think maybe she's never going to see her family again. That would have been very tough on a 19, 20-year-old. Yeah, it's amazing when I think of Martina Navratilova, who you know I was playing against towards the beginning of my, my career uh, when she was closer to the end of hers, how much respect I had for her, how I, it was seemed incomprehensible. It just seemed like it was, you know, an, an, another universe that you could win so many titles that you could play so well. I think I just made up a word there, but you know, it was always shocking to me to think about how, you know, someone could just put their heart out there, match in and match out. Tracy, you mentioned the ups and downs, but that was one of the things that was so great about Martina, how authentic she was. I mean, she went through, you know, all of the changes in life, all of the growth that took place for her, you know, having to leave her country, being alone, you know, finding a way through that to become one of the best, the best player in the world and, you know, to to set the bar at another level. And it, it's just incredible to think about how she went through that with so many eyes on her and just kept embracing the challenges, kept embracing the moments. And, you know, for me, she's just an inspiration because of it. We talk in the last section, guys, about how New Yorkers like food. You know what New Yorkers also like? Trailblazers, renegades, people that do things their own way without apology, and, and that's Martina. Um, she mentioned the piece. This was the last major she won. I mean, she played the U.S. Open 10 times before winning a title. And then, of course, she won over the crowd. She lived in New York, but I mean, she had an apartment in New York, so she knew the city well. And she's talked to me also about 1984 and how it stung her when the crowd was rooting for Chris Everett. I would encourage her to th think of the context of that match. And, you know, she had been winning everything in sight. Chris Everett was get getting on in years, and it was Super Saturday. McEnroe and Connors were coming up next. I, I don't think the crowd turned, and turned on her, per se, as they just got behind the underdog. I mean, Martina in 1984 was absolutely blitzing the field. So I think this is something crowds do all the time, which is they su support underdogs without any sort of disrespect to the favorite, which was Martina. But uh, I, I, I also, did, did you catch 59 majors? I mean, we, we sort of toss out these records and toss out these statistics uh, cavalierly sometimes. 59 majors, which is what she ended up with. She won the mixed doubles title in 2006. I mean, that that is just, that's the comedy portion of today's show. Now, and 59 six, majors is a joke. A 16 of them, John, at the U.S. Open, which is an open era record in New York. Uh, Chanda, in terms of her impact off the court, I mean, she talked about freedom. Uh, a lot of immigrants have found freedom by way of New York, and that was the same thing for Martina Navratilova. Yeah, I mean, she gave immigrants hope, you know, this idea of being able to make your own way, forge your own path, be allowed, you know, to do the things you want to be able to do, the freedom. I mean, that was huge. And also, you know, coming out the way she did when it affected her career, her endorsements, she didn't earn as much uh, for a period of time. I mean, there was tremendous risk in there and she just kept embracing it, you know, kept being who she was. And, and I think that was probably part of what allowed her to be the trailblazing player on the court where you are just honest and, and playing your game, playing it your way.